Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna discuss about Phalaenopsis orchids, specifically all about their root system. I'm gonna tell you as much as I know from experience or knowledge, things that you really should know about the root system because, well, root systems of orchids tend to act pretty strange and I think Phalaenopsis orchids are one of the strangest. So if you're a beginner, here are a few things you need to be aware of just so you don't panic or you don't get scared when your orchid will start to shoot roots everywhere. So in this video, I'll touch base with everything that I think you should be aware of, starting with the very beginning. Where do the roots start from? The structure responsible with root production is the axis or stem of the orchid. Roots are mainly produced in the lower sections. You will not see roots coming from the crown of an orchid or very, very high from between, let's say, the first two leaves. If this happens, it is actually a rare occasion. However, the bottom half part of the stem typically has roots. Now let's take the orchid in a plane like this. The orchids can sprout from the face of the stem, but also from the sides. Usually, there is no designated place from which roots can appear. They can start in the place of a flower spike, from the leaf joint. They can also start, as you can see, from the very middle of the stem. Their position has no boundaries. They can erupt from the very center of the leaf joint, or they can sprout from a little bit on the sides. From what appears to be the very same place, you can have one, two, or even three, or more, depends on the orchid, roots sprouting. As in this example, you can see these two roots are very, very close to each other. Don't worry about it, typically they make room for each other and they don't bother the leaf, the spike, or even each other. Another place where roots can sprout from is from each other. We call this branching. You can have a main root and then at some point along its length you can have a secondary root, which can be as thick as the mother root. It can actually be thinner, there is no rule when it comes to this. In my opinion, humidity plays an important role when it comes to roots. And a mother root, let's call it like that, can have multiple tiny roots sprouting and growing again, depending on the quantity of water or humidity. Typically, in order to branch out, a root needs to be a certain length. In very rare occasions, roots can produce branches very close to their sprouting place on the stem. In my experience, the root needs to be a few centimeters long, maybe two centimeters or so, in order to be able to branch. If you only see a root tip and you manage to break it, most probably that root will not branch. But if your orchid is a few centimeters long and you break the tip, that root can definitely branch out. And because roots can sprout from the very same place flower spikes usually sprout from, many people confuse them with flower spikes, at least in the beginning. So if you check the description down below, you'll see a video that I made a while back in which I show you the difference between the root and a flower spike in very early stages. So if you want to be able to tell apart roots from spikes from the very beginning, check the video below. Now that we're done with where these roots sprout from, let's talk about their color. Phalaenopsis orchid roots can have various colors. Let's start with what you will see first. In the beginning, when the root sprouts, you will first see the root tip. In my example, you can see it here. It's already pretty far along, almost a centimeter long. Root tips don't actually look like the entire length of the roots. They are glossy and do not have a form development which can absorb moisture. The color of the root tip can vary. In my example, you can see these root tips are a nice vivid apple green, but you can have roots which are actually more reddish. This has to do mainly with the characteristics of the orchid. Red pigmentation can be natural for Phalaenopsis orchids and it's closely related to the quantity of anthocyanin, which is a pigment in all plants, that the orchid produces. In my experience, orchids which have purple or contain purple in their flowers have more anthocyanin than the ones that are white or yellow. So if you see your orchid producing a reddish or purplish root tip, in 99% of the cases it's absolutely normal. And some people find it quite attractive. Now this pigment is more accentuated in bright light. If you see in my example, the root tends to be more reddish on this side and more green on the other side. And this is because this side does not receive as much light 
as this one. It depends on the position of the root. So sometimes Phalaenopsis orchids can have both green and reddish type of roots if on one side you don't have much light but on the other you do. And you can see, as in my example, a root can have both green colors and red colors. Light and its intensity has a strong impact on all orchids and all of their structures. But when it comes to the Phalaenopsis orchid roots, as we see, it makes an impact when it comes to color. The red pigmentation is stronger because anthocyanin does have a protective role amongst other roles. But it's not the only pigment which responds to light. Chlorophyll, aka the green pigment, responds as well. When we have light available for the orchid roots, they will be rather greenish because the orchid will allocate chlorophyll to photosynthesize in that area. However, in lack of light, the orchid will not allocate uh, chlorophyll and the root tips can actually lose their color. So in this example, you can see that the root tips on my orchid are very, very pale, very pale green, but things can go even lighter than this. Root tips can become yellowish or even completely white in lack of light. This, however, does not mean that the root is not healthy. The main function of the root is not to photosynthesize. That's for the leaf to produce. The roots photosynthesize as a backup plan. And speaking about this, I have another video in which I talk all about roots in general and their functions, so if you're interested, check the description down below. I explain there why photosynthesis is really not important for the roots and why orchids can do very, very well if you do not provide light to the roots. But when it comes to color, you can see light really determines the color of the root tips. And not only the root tips, the roots themselves as well. My example is not the best one because this orchid was actually repotted into this container which does not receive light. Up until now, it was planted in a white or translucent container and it did receive light, therefore the roots are a little green. But if an orchid sits in a completely opaque container, the entire root can become yellow or even white. Yet again, it doesn't mean the root is unhealthy or is sick, it just means it does not have chlorophyll pigments, but that is perfectly fine. It is not her job to photosynthesize primarily. It does so only if it has the means to do so. Now, as you can see in this example, the entire root looks very different from the tip. It's not as glossy and it looks like a film appeared on it. Well, you wouldn't be far from the truth, we call this a velamen. It is a coating which is very water absorbent and feeds and hydrates the root inside. The actual root of a Phalaenopsis orchid, you can see here, I don't want to break it, but it is inside of this velamen, is a very thin string, pretty much like a thread. That is the actual root, but it is coated with the velamen, which pulls water and nutrients from the environment and feeds the orchid. When it's first formed, the velamen is actually not water absorbent. So if you put a drop of water on it, you'll see it remains on the root. It does not get absorbed into the root. Now, this is normal and it happens when the root is very, very young. The root needs to grow a little bit more or more time needs to pass until the velamen becomes ready to absorb water. When this happens, you will see it change color and actually absorb that drop of water really, really fast. There is a big difference. Until the velamen starts to absorb water, I think a few weeks need to pass. This is not only valid for Phalaenopsis orchids, it's valid for many orchids, especially for catacetums, when you're trying to figure out when to water them after the dormancy break. So as you can see, a new root does not change color when you put water on it. Maybe towards the base, the velamen is old enough, uh, not really, it doesn't change color. So at this stage, the velamen does not change color when it's wet, but older roots do change color, as I showed you in this example. So as you can see, when they're dry, they have this grayish color, but if they photosynthesize, and only if they photosynthesized, when you wet them, they will change color to green. This is a cue, especially for orchid beginners, to water their orchid. Typically, if you're growing a Phalaenopsis orchid traditionally in the bark chips or even the sphagnum moss, you will pretty much need to wait for all of the roots to become silvery before you water. When everything is silvery, you can give a very good water to the orchid. And of course, when the roots are green like this, the orchid does not need water. And you can wait a few more days until they become totally silver. Next up, how do they grow? 
Well, pretty much because of the Phalaenopsis orchids' nature to be epiphytic, they grow in each and every direction. You can have orchids which are a little bit more tame, and you can have ones with very, very wild and unruly roots. This is absolutely normal. Phalaenopsis orchid roots will go in the medium, around the medium, and even shoot up to the sky. Why do they do this? Well, it is in their nature, it is absolutely normal. In nature, the ancestors of this orchid grow attached to trees, and typically the trunk is more in a vertical position rather than horizontal. Therefore, the roots will grow upwards as well in the hopes that they will anchor the orchid properly. Again, I talk about this aspect more in my dedicated root video, so check it out if you wanna learn more. So because it is in the core nature of this orchid to put out roots in each and every direction to anchor it properly, this trait has remained even after hybridization because all Phalaenopsis that we currently grow in our homes descend from the same ancestors and all of them have this trait and have this nature. Therefore, the gene never went away. Of course, growing orchids potted means that we can hydrate them better and typically a good portion of the root system will be in the pot, but if you have aerial roots, by the way, we call this aerial roots, although if you wanna be politically correct, all of the roots of a Phalaenopsis are aerial. Since they are not potted, we refer to them as aerial. So the orchid will have both aerial roots in every direction, even upwards and also potted roots. And that is normal. If you grow your orchids potted, you do want the vast majority of roots to be in the pot simply because they will get more hydration. The aerial roots are adapted to survive and to still grow with the humidity they find in the air. They will form according to this humidity and the parameters of your environment. If you try to pot one of these aerial roots, you might have the surprise to have it die because it is not prepared to handle high amounts of moisture. If, however, you see that your aerial roots are starting to shrivel slightly and you want to maintain them alive, a little misting, a little watering cannot hurt every once in a while. Just be sure you don't leave water in the crown or in the leaf joints. Now, speaking about the direction of the roots, there are quite a few, let's call them myths, let's call them opinion. Um, one of them when I first started my hobby was that a orchid will grow aerial roots in the sky like this because it doesn't like the medium. And that is completely false, but you can have an instance which can look like that. If the medium inside is broken or it's not suited for the orchid, you will see that the roots will not go deeper. Maybe because they don't have space or they don't have air pockets to grow further or because really they don't like something with that medium. So they try to avoid it. I do believe that orchid roots are capable to avoid certain areas if they feel, chemically speaking, that the medium is improper. It can also happen that all of the roots inside the pot die off and decompose and <laughs> get lost with watering and you're only left with aerial roots and it will seem like the orchid only grew aerial roots. So there are instances where yes, it can appear that the orchid does not like the medium but it's certainly not the case for everything and in the vast majority of cases aerial roots don't mean anything. It's absolutely normal as long as you have a good amount of roots in the pot. Also people speculate as to where they grow more. Some say they grow towards the moisture, and in my experience, that's absolutely not true. If they would grow towards the moisture, they would go inside the pot because it's the place with the most moisture. So for me, this is just a little myth, but of course I don't have evidence other than my experience, so I might be wrong. What I did actually notice that the roots do is grow away from the light. And this is valid for many orchids, not only Phalaenopsis. If you have a light source coming from here, then the roots will tend to grow either to the side, either backwards. You will have a few roots maybe that lean due to their weight in front and towards the light, but typically the roots grow away from the light. And the logic behind it that I found is that usually are not found where the light source comes from. If there would be a branch or a tree trunk in front of the orchid, it will actually create a shadow on the orchid. Um, therefore, the roots, at least for me, don't go towards the light source. And for this orchid, the light source is from above actually, because I don't grow my orchids in front of the window, I have artificial light for my Phalaenopsis orchids. So I started to talk about the fact that orchid roots typically adapt to the medium or environment they grow in. 
aerial roots will be adapted to a lot of air and less moisture while the roots that grow inside the pot if you have your orchids potted will be more adapted to moisture and this is true and in my experience the main factor that decides if a root will do okay or not is the ratio between air and moisture therefore whenever you repot new orchids into a certain type of medium to a different type of medium you can have roots dying out on you you can even experience roots not surviving if you repot it simply in the same type of medium but in fresh medium and this is because old medium doesn't have the same qualities or characteristics as new medium let's take for example bark an organic version the old medium which is broken down retains a lot more water and the root grew in accordance to that quantity of water when you switch to new bark and you might know new bark if it's good quality is not very water retentive you will completely change the moisture that that root was acquainted with so it is possible for it to die so in many cases when you repot phalaenopsis orchids you can have a lot of roots dying but in my example i have been using clay medium whether ceramics or leca for two years already all of these roots that grew in this medium have no issue with me repotting orchids and changing the medium simply because they're very adapted to that level of air and moisture but it's not uncommon to lose roots and in my opinion the main reason if it's not an ailment or rotting is the fact that they cannot adapt to the new conditions now phalaenopsis orchids are not dormancy orchids they don't take a rest don't necessarily take a break from anything no matter what other companies might tell you therefore their roots can continue to grow all the time typically when the orchid blooms especially on the types that you can find in flower shops not necessarily these ones it is not uncommon for the growth tips to stop the root will still be functional, of course it will absorb water, but you will not see growing tips anymore. The tip will be covered in the velamen, it will not be green, that's absolutely normal and it can happen. In some cases though, if the orchid has enough energy and the conditions are great, even if the orchid starts to bloom or grow flower spikes, the roots can still grow as well leaves mainly will be paused but the roots can continue to grow however though for the vast majority of phalaenopsis roots grow more in the warmer seasons or when the orchids are not focused on blooming when spring comes typically the standard phalaenopsis starts to grow its roots and it does so at a very accelerated pace throughout the year it can continue those roots it can branch out but the most growth happens in spring and summer and I think that is about it on the behavior of the roots and everything you should know. More about the function, the role and how they work in the description down below. I do have a very extended video about uh, orchid roots and functions. This was not the point of this video. The point of this video was to talk about the so-called strange and weird things they might do, where they sprout from, the color of the root and so on. Basically responding to a few comments and emails that I got these days. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And you know the drill. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, and fun stuff of the sorts. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. And with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.